trigonometry, the study of triangles and the relationships between their sides and angles. In this video, we're going to look at how to find an unknown angle in a right angle triangle using inverse ratios, sine inverse, cos inverse and tan inverse. So now we need to talk about reverse operations, or you could call them opposite operations or inverse operations. Okay, so we already know a few of these from our studies. So the reverse operation of adding is subtracting. The reverse operation of multiplying is dividing. The reverse operation of squaring is square root. And the reverse operation of cubing is cubed root. I like to call it reverse because when we are balancing equations, the reverse of an operation will cancel it out. Okay. Now we can see here, though, we have three new operations. We have sine, cosine and tan, and these are operations that find the ratio attached to an angle. So what we're going to need to do now is to look at what are the reverse operations to sine, cosine and tan. So what they're called are sine inverse, cosine inverse and tan inverse. OK, and they are recognizable by this little power to the minus one. So that's what makes it recognizable as an inverse. So the reverse of sine is sine inverse. OK, so what does that mean? So what it means is that the sine of an angle equals a ratio. So to reverse that, the sine inverse of a ratio goes back to the angle. OK? The cosine of an angle equals a ratio. So to reverse that, the cosine inverse of a ratio will equal the angle. And finally, the tan of an angle equals a ratio. So the tan inverse of that ratio equals the angle. OK. So we'll need these inverse ratios moving forward because we're going to need them to balance equations for finding an unknown angle in a right angle triangle. So these tools are all about balancing our equations to find an unknown angle. OK, so let's look at example number one. Find the measure of the angle correct to one decimal place. OK. Now you see these lines either side, these like gold posts either side, they always mean the measure of something. OK, so this is find the measure of the angle correct to one decimal place. So just like with all questions on right angle triangles, we're going to label first. So opposite my right angle, I have my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, I have my opposite and the remaining one is my adjacent. So what two sides are we going to use for our ratio? We're going to use the opposite, which is 7, and we're going to use the hypotenuse, which is 12. So you choose the two sides that you know. The unknown this time is going to be the angle. So choosing the opposite and hypotenuse means that we're going to use the sine ratio. So we will be using sine inverse of opposite over hypotenuse this time. So what we do is, to build our solution, we just use the sine ratio. We start off with the sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse 7 over 12. Now, here is where our inverse comes into place. I have now the sine of A, but what I really want is just A. I don't want the sine of A, I just want A. So to get rid of the sine part, to cancel it out, I need to use the reverse. And the reverse operation of sine is sine inverse. And what we're going to do is, because we're balancing to solve this out, I'm going to use the sine inverse on both sides. OK. So the sine inverse should cancel the operation sine. So on the left-hand side, we should be left with just the A. But on the right-hand side, we have taken the sine inverse of the ratio 7 over 12. OK, and now all we do is that just goes straight into your calculator. OK, so out with your calculator. 
Now you'll see that the sign inverse is always the part behind the sign button. Okay, usually on a calculator, you have to use the shift button to access that operation behind the button. Okay, so you can see it there in yellow sign inverse. So how we're going to access that is by pressing shift sign. So shift first, then sign, and that will bring up to the screen sign inverse. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in as the ratio. So we're going to use the ratio button or the fraction button and then type in our seven down arrow to the bottom to the denominator, type in your 12, come out of that with your arrow and put on your closed bracket sign and then equals. And what you'll get there is 35.68533471. Check your question. What were we asked for? We were asked for the angle of A correct to one decimal place. So you can see our decimal places are 0.68. So the 8 is greater than 5, so we will round up to 35.7. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now, before I move on, I'm just going to show you how to do that on the calculator, exactly how I've it typed out. So let's follow our instructions. So it's the shift button, sign, and you can see that brings up the sign inverse. Then use my ratio button, put in your seven, arrow down, 12. Now you see the way that the cursor is stuck in at the denominator. So to release that, just use the arrow to bring it back out again. Then you can finish off your brackets. Okay, and then press equals and you get your answer there. Okay. Now let's look at example number two. Find the measure of the angle A correct two decimal places. Label first, so opposite my right angle, I have my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, I have my opposite and the remaining side is my adjacent. So we're going to use the adjacent because we know it's 12 and the hypotenuse because we know it's 13. So what ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse? It's cosine. So we're gonna build our solution now using the cosine ratio. So we have the cosine of the angle A equals 12 over 13. Now, we have the cosine of A, but what we really want is just A. So we need to cancel off the cosine operation. So we're going to use our balancing method, and we're going to use the reverse operation of cosine. We're going to use cosine inverse, and we're going to use it on both sides to maintain balance. So cosine inverse and cosine because the reverses of each other, they will cancel each other out. So on the left hand side, we'll just be left with an A. And on the right hand side, we'll have to take the cosine inverse of the ratio 12 over 13. So then that goes straight into our calculator. This time we're using cosine inverse. So shift cosine, then use your ratio button, type in 12, arrow button down, type in 13, come out of your denominator, close your brackets, equals, okay? And you can see there that our answer is 22.61986495. Go back and check your question. It's correct to two decimal places. So after the 0.61, you can see here I have a nine. So I will be rounding up to 0.62. So my answer is 22.62 degrees. Now I'm just gonna show you all of that on the calculator again. So it goes shift, cosine, gets my cosine inverse, then use your ratio button to put in your ratio. So that's 12 down arrow, 13. Come out of your denominator with your arrow, finish your brackets, and then press equals 22.619. Okay. Now, example number three. Find the measure of the angle B correct two decimal places. So labeling my triangle, opposite my right angle, I have my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, I have my opposite and the remaining side is my adjacent. What two sides are we going to use this time? We're going to use the opposite because we know it's six and the adjacent because we know it is eight. So what ratio uses opposite and adjacent? It's the tan ratio. So we are going to start our solution here by building the tan of B equals 
opposite over adjacent 6 over 8. So we're going to use our balancing method to find B. So it's the tan of B. So the reverse operation of tan is tan inverse. So take the tan inverse on both sides. So tan inverse and tan cancel each other out. So we have the angle B equals, and on the right hand side, the tan inverse of the ratio 6 over 8. So that will go straight into my calculator. Shift, tan, ratio button, 6, down arrow, 8. Come out of your denominator, end brackets equals, and we get 36.8698. Check your question, correct two decimal places. So after my 0.86, I have a 9, so let's round up to 0.87. So my answer is 36.87. Now, example number four, find the measure of the angle P, correct to the nearest minute. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a second, to the nearest minute. So first thing, label your triangle. So opposite my right angle, I have my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, I have my opposite, and my remaining side is the adjacent. Okay, so what sides will we use this time? We'll use the adjacent because we know it's 4.2. And we'll use the hypotenuse because we know it's 10.5. Now, don't let the decimals throw you off, okay? So, using adjacent and hypotenuse, which ratio is that? That's cosine. So, we'll be using the cosine ratio this time. So, use the cosine ratio to build your solution. So, the cosine of the angle P is adjacent over hypotenuse 4.2 over 10.5. So we're really looking for P. So using our balancing method, the reverse of cosine is cosine inverse. So take cosine inverse on both sides. So cosine inverse and cosine cancel each other out. So we have P on the left equals, and on the right hand side, take the cosine inverse of the ratio, 4.2 over 10.5. So put that straight into your calculator. Now, this is where you can see that we have the answer here, 66.4218215. This is in degrees, in decimal form in degrees. But if you look at our question, it says find correct to the nearest minute. So we're going to have to change this from decimal form into degrees, minutes and seconds. So just press this button here when you have your answer. And it will just change the answer over into 66 degrees, 25 minutes, 18.56 seconds. So the double dash is seconds. The exact same as time. So just think of it as hours, minutes, seconds. Okay? And it all is base 60, just the same as time. Okay? Now we have to do correct to the nearest minute. So... If you look at it then, we have to look at the seconds if we want to round this off. Now, my seconds are 18.56, which is less than 30. Now, I know you're usually used to going, is it less than 5 or greater or equal to 5 when you're rounding off? But this is different because it's base 60. So think of it like a clock, okay? If it's less than 30 seconds we're going to round down, and if it's greater than 30 seconds or equal to 30 seconds, we'll round up. So here this is less than 30 seconds, so we're going to round down to 66 degrees, 25 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to show you that on the calculator. I get a decimal answer, and to be fair, that's how it's asked most of the time. But if it's ever asked in degrees and minutes, you press this button here. Here's the degrees, seconds, minutes button. You can see that it changes straight away. And we look at our seconds to round up or round down. Okay. Now, example number five. Find the measure of the angle E, correct the nearest minute. So labeling my triangle, opposite my right angle is my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle is my opposite. And the remaining side is my adjacent. What two sides will we use for our ratio? Opposite, because we know it's 8. Adjacent, because we know it's 9.7. So what ratio uses opposite and adjacent? It's tan. So we're going to use the tan ratio to build our solution. So the tan of E equals opposite over adjacent. So we have to find E. To do that, we're going to use our balancing method. So what is the reverse of tan? So the reverse of tan is tan inverse. 
So take tan inverse on both sides. So now tan inverse and tan should cancel each other out and leave just E on the left hand side that we're looking for. And on the right hand side, we take the tan inverse of the ratio 8 over 9.7. Straight into your calculator with that and we get 39.5138 degrees. Okay, but if we check our question, it said correct the nearest minute, which means we have to take it out of decimal form and put it into degrees minutes second form. So press our degrees minutes seconds button. So if we look at our seconds there, they're 49.84 seconds this time. That's over 30 seconds. So we will round up to the next minute. We are going to take our answer to be then 39 degrees, 31 minutes. Now to finish up, we've one for you. Find the measure of the angle A, correct one decimal place. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, so let's correct our answer. So we need to label our triangle first. So opposite my right angle, I have my hypotenuse. Opposite my angle, I have my opposite and the remaining side is my adjacent. What two sides will I use for my ratio? I'm going to use the hypotenuse because I know it's nine and the opposite because I know it's four. So which ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? It's the sine ratio. So we're going to use the sine ratio to build our solution. Okay, so we know that the sine of the angle A equals opposite over hypotenuse is four over nine. Now we want to find A and we have this operation sine attached to the A that we need to get rid of. So we're going to use our balancing method to solve and to cancel out the sine operation, we're going to use the reverse operation, sine inverse. So sine inverse is our reverse operation and make sure to take it on both sides, okay, to keep maintain balance. So sine inverse of sine, they cancel each other and we're left then with A on the left, which is what we're looking for. And then on the right hand side, take sine inverse of the ratio 4 over 9. So sine inverse of the ratio 4 over 9. And then that goes straight into our calculator. So for sine inverse, I have shift sine and put in my ratio that button and put in 4 down arrow 9. Come out of your denominator, close brackets, equals 26.387. Check your answer. It was correct to one decimal place. So after one decimal place, after the three, I have an eight. So greater than five, so I will round up. So my answer is 26.4. So A equals 26.4, and don't forget your little degrees sign. Okay.